There we go. Here we go. Check one, two, three, four. Recording purposes is if I can get each of your names, please. Jordy Randall. Your position is? Executive producer. Your name is? Andrew Reggett. Your position is? Showrunner. And your name and position is? Tom Cox, executive producer. And of course the show is? Fortunate Son. Let's do this. Coming down in three, two, one. Gentlemen, thank you very much for doing this interview with me. Fortunate Son, sounds like something really interesting, something from back in the day, and it sounds like it's got a lot of excitement on this and mystery at the same time. Folks who are listening to this are going, okay, so what the hell is he talking about? What is the show about, please? Well, we start with what we're gonna experience as a phenomenal spy drama set in, the 19, in 1968 as American soldiers are fleeing the Vietnam War into Canada, and our lead character, Ruby, is gonna harbor one of those individuals. And I'll let Andrew tell you the rest of that one. Here we go. Yeah, so it's a, it's a story about, uh, about an activist family who's, who's kind of running an underground railroad for, for uh, deserters and, uh, and draft dodgers from the Vietnam War, and kind of uh, what some of the, uh, the pitfalls of that turn out to be um, in terms of uh, people spying on them and, uh, and you know, they're the, the, kind of the police presence that they get surrounded and some of the things that happen to them. What, what seems like a benign world becomes quite dark over the course of the first season they get in over their heads. And this is the thing I want to know because even though we are telling a story, how true, like how real are we talking about here? So the, the events are inspired by real, the, our story is inspired by real events. Mm -hmm. And there was, a, there were a lot of people that came north, a lot of people who were dragged back across. So the stakes were high, but um, we've added a, 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 an element through Andrew's creativity that sort of takes the stakes to an international level and and that's fictionalized but it's definitely based in in uh, in reality. How did you come up with something like this to, to make this into a drama? Well it was kind of interesting because my colleague and friend Tom here uh, actually lived this life. Uh, his his mother was uh, was an, an activist uh, who was involved in the Underground Railroad uh, who who, who, whose house harbored people and helped them settle and help try to keep them safe uh, after coming across the border, and so he's, we started with you know some anecdotes from Tom about about that, and, and after a while we said, well, this has got to be a show. So um, so and I took off from there, and and you know we've now fictionalized his family. They'll be very relieved to hear, no doubt. But um, uh, so. It, so it it took off from that position, but that that, that was the, the the beginning of it. Because this was part of your family history, what were certain points that you really wanted to make sure this needs to be told? I think it's the relevance to today's it, uh, viewers, to today's world. Um, that story in 1968 resonates today because we are re-experiencing some elements of it. And uh, so what, I guess what was really important to me was to show a woman who believes so strongly in social justice that she is willing to jeopardize everything. She is willing to jeopardize her family even. And, and that, that's of course where the drama comes for the family is how far does she go in, in that pursuit. But we need activists today. We need young, old activists today as we never have before. And, and so that's what I wanted to get across for sure. And I, that's something we all shared. Because we are talking 19, 1968, the setting. Where's the setting for this in Canada? And having to go back and getting the, you know, set up. What was that like and how, what are we going to see? Well, and we're just, you know, we're just in the process of doing that now. We start shooting at the end of June and we're in the midst of finding locations in and around Calgary that will play for 1968. So it's not an easy thing to do anymore. Just, you know, think about all the changes that have happened. But, but we'll, it's not a studio show. It's not going to be a show that we're just building the sets and staying in the studio. No, you can't. No, this is like we're on the street. There's demonstrations. We got to make this real. And that's the production challenge we're going through right now. What do you hope is going to come across with this in this first season for folks who are, you know, video games and, you know, so many other other distractions that are going on that can keep them not having to think about what's going on in the world, even though we are fed 
easily on what's happening today. I, I, I hope that the audience, when they see this, they're engaged, number one, in the story. It's a, sh it's a show they're going to have to keep watching. It's a gripping tale. It's a serialized drama. But it's also this generation of people who weren't alive when Vietnam happened, and they know a little bit about it. And they certainly don't know Canada's role and the, can the Canadian stand on that at the time. So I hope we're showing a story that's universal. It's going to show a, con you know, a similarity to today, but also show Canada in a unique light on a world stage. Well, I'm looking forward to this. It sounds like it's going to be not just uh, you know enjoyable to watch on television, but at the same time, we may get a little bit of a history lesson happening here too. Gentlemen, thank you so much for this interview. All right, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank sure. you.